Greetings, ghouls. Welcome to Deadsville Horror Talk. I'm your host, Ronan James, and to my left, my co-host, the lovely Steph Infection. Hey, Scream Hearts. Tonight, we're going to talk about the fifth installment in the Evil Dead franchise, 2023's Evil Dead Rise. Mm -hmm. This one just came to Max. Yes. Uh, we saw it in the theater. Yes. And we did do a live horror talk about this one when we first saw it in the theater. But uh, that was just kind of like a live. Yeah. Kind of fun. Streaming uh, thing talking with you guys out there. This one is going to be more of an in-depth review and you get more of our uh, of our opinions. We're going to pretend that one didn't happen. That? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After I mean, this it's point. Not, <laughs> it's not on any of the streaming platforms. The only yeah. place you can see that is go watch the live stream replay on YouTube. But uh, the sound and everything, that was a learning process Let's back say then. We were, don't. <laughs> yeah, probably don't. Just watch this one. <laughs> Just watch this one. This one will be perfect for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we watched it again now that it was on yeah. Max. Uh -huh. I got to, like, I have to try not to say HBO Max now because I've been saying it for so long. But, uh, but yeah. I, I didn't even realize it was different until today. So. Yes, it's now Max. It's just now Max. Yeah. So, uh, yes, on Max we have <clears throat> Evil Dead Rise, the fifth installment in one of my personal favorite horror franchises. Uh -huh. I know. I mean, Ash Williams, a hero, personal hero of mine, of course. Shop smart, shop S smart. <laughs> I feel like everyone that's into horror has to say that it's one of their favorite franchises. I mean, yeah, how can I you guess. not? How can you not? Yeah, like, but there's people that don't like the slapstick of Army of Darkness. There's people that I wasn't really a huge fan of Army of Darkness, but like and the Evil first Dead and Two, second, same thing. I mean, what? Evil Dead Two had the slapstick as well. That was Army of Darkness great. definitely went more yeah 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 you know into the uh not that i, I mean the I cartoon enjoyed camp it. yeah <clears throat> but i I'm, you know it's just i loved army of darkness i thought i mean that's what solidified it as one of my favorites because i loved evil dead the very first one uh as like a as like an independent low budget mm -hmm. masterpiece of of filmmaking for for sam raimi to do what he did with the small cast and small budget and everything else he mm -hmm. did and then to get to go and and take your film and redo it with an actual budget yeah. and get to add a lot of uh special effects and mm -hmm. and, and evil dead 2 kind of added that uh over the top camp that we came to love about this franchise and the uh excessive blood and mm -hmm, gore and mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean that was two was like uh it kind of set the bar for for horror comedy for decades to come yeah i, I feel say. like a lot of people even like that one better than the original i agree it's two is probably my favorite because mm -hmm. it managed <laughs> to blend the two uh to blend the slapstick with yeah genuine horror like yeah it's definitely a good one and then you had uh army of darkness which was a bit more of like a, a bit of an adventure romp when you you know going back in time and uh and and the knights king arthur and a more silly silly absolutely yeah. but we really <laughs> got ash to solidify and come into his own i mm -hmm. felt like in that one and two he was still kind of like finding himself we well, yeah, army of darkness is when it, it became like a cult following where Absolutely. everyone just was like okay who's bruce campbell yes. <laughs> we because love we liked him now we love him yeah. yeah i mean because you have lines like give me some sugar baby yeah, yeah. so yeah so we all obviously fell in love with bruce campbell where uh after army of darkness so on that note you want to read my shirt this sure. is from a little band out in England called Devon 66 and I love this shirt. Our friend John Mahoney brought it over from the UK for me. Can you read it? Well, a little higher. Fuck you if you're not Bruce Campbell. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? Very nice. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. They also have a song. The King. We should be probably should have put their song on this. <laughs> yeah. We could get copyright infringement issues playing music. <laughs> Don't play music on YouTube. You'll get copyright yeah. infringements. Even if you own it. <laughs> yep. Even if you own it. But, uh, I'm wearing a new shirt, too, here. Uh, not Bruce Campbell, but a uh, so new cool. creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm, courtesy of whoop, uh, Cavity Colors. Mm -hmm. 
the same people I got my Ghoulies 2 shirt from that I wore on the last episode. I originally went there to get this shirt. I know. And then it was like a couple bucks more uh, to get free shipping, which would have made this Why? Incredible. I just, exactly. just get another shirt, man. Exactly. Even if it didn't, just get another shirt. <laughs> I have a problem. I know. <laughs> Believe me, I do too. All right. So aside from that, a bit more about us before we get into our spoiler-free section and, mm -hmm. uh, and digging into our, our uh, more of our cast and crew here. Yeah, uh, who are you and why should I leave and listen to you? Well, uh, let me tell you, Steph Infection <laughs> and people out there in interwebs land. I am Deadsville director Ronan James. I have been a stuntman and stunt coordinator, now second unit director and director uh, for about 20 years. SAG member, been in a bunch of movies, you've seen me die or get shot, I guarantee you, mm -hmm. at least once. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 I died in, Gotham I stunt doubled in, uh, there's a few others out there, but you can check out my IMDB, Jay Green is my stage name. J-A-E. Uh, J-A-E, Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I studied film before I got into stunts, so uh, now I am doing what I originally went to school to do after having a nice little career hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, and uh, I feel like I am somewhat qualified to discuss some of the stuff that we see and, uh, and, and uh, want to review here. I can at least tell you if the stunts suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey. To my left, the producer, actress, dance choreographer, host, mm -hmm. talent, booker, uh, what else? Whatever. Infection, whatever we need. I do our taxes, too. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know. Accountant. <laughs> many hats. <laughs> so many hats here at Deadsville by the lovely Steph in the Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, next up, I think you're going to appear in our uh, Dickie Devil video for Oh My Goth. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I think so. so. If not, I am now. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got a couple other things coming up. Just, uh, I'm not even going to give the newest one. Oh my God! No, no, you're not, <laughs> not going to tease it yet. No, you can't. But, uh, but Denzel Rock and Roll Mysteries. We just dropped a new uh, Kane Hodder teaser. Mm. So make sure you watch that on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those wonderful yes. places where we are. You can check it out. It's a bunch of Kane's highlights from uh, episode one of him voicing our puppet. Some funny stuff in there. If you have not subscribed yet. Please do so. Please, Follow please, please. us. Tune in. Tell your friends. That's how we grow this thing mm -hmm. and actually keep doing them. Mm -hmm. And they're fun. So. so hit that bell if you're on YouTube or hit the follow button on Spotify. Mm -hmm. and come back and check us out every week with a new episode. Yes, please do. All right, Steph Infection. All right. Give us that synopsis. Let's get to it. Oh, no. Before that. Oh, you're always trying to jump ahead. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, give the email address. Oh, I'll give you the email address. And we so. actually have mail today in the oh, mailbag yeah, so out here. You got to wait until the end <laughs> till we get to that mailbag. But if you want to shout out, comment, show us some pictures, show us anything, say literally say anything you want about whatever movie. If you check out, checked out something that we did or if you see what we're going to talk about next week, email us subject mailbag to deadsvillehorrortalk at gmail.com. So it's Deadsville Hard Talk at gmail.com. Subject mailbag. And tell us, you know, make sure you include your name and and your <laughs> wait, whatever handles, whatever you want us to include, just you know, shout out to us. So whatever you want. Whatever would like. you want. Except your penis. Yeah, we can't do that. Do not send pictures of your penis. Don't do it. Or I will send Kane Hodder to your house. Oh. And you don't want that. This is, this is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'll <right>. do that. <laughs> Synopsis time, Steph Infection. All right. So, <laughs> The Evil Dead Rise is a twisted tale of two estranged sisters whose reunion is cut short by the rise of flesh-possessing demons, thrusting them into a primal battle 
for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's a scary family. Scarier than mine, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Mine's pretty scary too. Yeah. I think you probably have some family <laughs> feuds. I know. <laughs> probably scarier than this. Maybe. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it pretty much sums it up. It's a uh, family tale, and we get Evil Dead Rise as the setting moves to a high rise, mm -hmm. as opposed to the woods, as mm -hmm. opposed to the uh, the usual cabin that we uh, that we are accustomed to. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, and it's good. It's a it's a nice little departure. So uh, let's talk about our director. Yeah. Lee Cronin, yeah, who also wrote this one. He is our writer and director, and Lee Cronin is from Dublin, Ireland. Mm -hmm. Previously known for Ghost Train, Billy and Chuck, and Through the Night. Nothing I know. Yeah, I have not heard of any of these. Mm -mm. <laughs> the Hole in the Ground, I believe, is now also on, uh, I think it's on Max. Oh, the hole in the ground. They just—it's a movie that he did, that he directed in 2019. Creepy little boy. We yeah. did. Yes, he, yeah. that was one of his that people were talking about, and they did put it on Max. So you can also watch his previous oh. offering on Max if you are so inclined. You should watch that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he's written a few things. He's directed a few things. Some shorts, mostly. It's amazing how these guys do just a couple shorts, and next thing you know, they're directing the next installment of a huge horror franchise. I that must be like... It must be uh, nice. <laughs> there must be some incredible shorts. <laughs> incredible shorts. Or they are just kissing the right ass. Right? Because we all know how that works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so tell us about our cast, Steph Infection. Oh, I'm telling us about our cast. All right. So. <laughs> I mean, we can go back and forth, but... Well, I, I always butcher names. Uh, oh, so. yeah, you need me to do the names. Yeah. I'm pretty good at those. Actually. So, like, our, our mother, the, the only one I will, okay, so Ellie is our mother, who's a kind of our main character throughout it. Yes. Um, Played by Alyssa Al Sutherland. Alyssa Sutherland, yeah. yes. And uh, she was in I Blood never... Vessel. This is yes, where we yes. Know her from. Yeah. We um, watched on Shudder. You can watch right now. It's a really good vampire movie it's kind of like a world war ii uh era vampire movie with a bunch of allied soldiers on a life raft adrift think vampire nazis yeah kind of well what it is like, like a nazi freighter comes upon them and they board the freighter and everybody on it's already dead and mm -hmm. and there's uh you know the nazis were famous for trying to unlock secrets of the supernatural and hitler was into the occult and all that stuff so it always makes a good uh, backstory to include yeah. a little truth, which, uh, yeah, this was like about a, a ship that yeah. was uh, that was carrying a family of vampires yeah. uh, that was sealed in, and one of them gets out and kills all the crew, and and so yeah, this little life raft of of uh, Allied soldiers comes upon it, and Alyssa Sutherland is our British intelligence officer uh, mm -hmm. of the crew, and she's really good in that too. Uh, yeah, that's not what I know her from though. I knew her from Viking shoes. Queen of Right, yes, and I did not watch Vikings, yeah, but I've heard that dead. as well. She, she was has that Ragnar's wife. Yeah, she has that wife. look. She definitely has that look. They had a lot of kids, yeah. <laughs> a lot of kids. Uh, mm -hmm. yes. so that's where I knew her from. Uh, and she's got great like facial features, obviously, you know, oh, yeah. you, you see all you've all seen the posters, so like uh, in addition to being a really good actress, she also has great facial features that lend itself well to the makeup. High, yeah, and high the, cheekbones. The creepy uh, sunken eyes, and she's got a big smile with creepy teeth that she can make her mouth real wide. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's really, yeah, she was really great for the role. Oh, I, yeah. I think that was like a perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfect yeah. casting for it. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, once, you know, we'll get to it, but obviously she turns. Once she turns, it's just, and mm -hmm. it's on. So. Yeah, and her sister is played, her sister Beth is played by Lily Sullivan. Yep. Um, and Lily has a backstory that a lot of us musicians uh, will be, uh, we can relate to. Groovy? <laughs> it's the ongoing joke. If you haven't seen the movie yet, that's not really a spoiler. Yeah, we'll get to it. But yes, uh, Beth is a sound tech, guitar tech, uh, for what appears to be when they show her is a big 
touring uh, band or big touring uh, company that she works for, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, she uh, her sister calls her a groupie, <laughs> which we get to later is a bit of a condescending jab. I'm a guitar tech. Yeah, and uh, and she even makes a point to say like she's up for a promotion that if she gets it, she'll be the first woman to ever get that. Yeah, that position, uh, which was kind of cool. You know, again, I mean, in this movie, there's a lot of there's a lot of woman power in this movie, and and I hear heard there was people calling it woke, but everybody calls everything woke. I just I saw it was a good movie. You can oh, I, have didn't, a, I didn't. Well, I didn't see it that way. I just thought it was yeah. No, I just thought it was a good movie. I mean, you can have woman power and it not be like yeah woke. <laughs> you know. Uh, I know. I mean, another... Not, not pushing it too hard. We might as well jump to the other uh, character in here, speaking of. Uh, Morgan Davies plays Danny. Yeah. And Danny is a... He's uh, a trans man. He's a trans man, which means he was a woman. Yeah, but... Transitioned to a man, and he plays uh, a male in the movie, obviously. And... The cool thing was they never even said anything about it until like after the movie had been out for a while. Nobody made a big deal about it. It's not mentioned in the movie. It's not even part of the movie. You just he think just, it's a boy. You he think was just casted a boy. as he's a cast as a boy, and because he is a boy, right? <laughs> but but, but I he mean, was just casted as a boy. Yeah. As a, but but yeah, again, as there's. I think one of the problems that we get with a lot of when people tend tend to have backlash towards the wokeness of some of these movies is they push when too they hard. push yeah. too hard. Yeah. Right. And they like they just go out of their way to be like, hey, this is we have this. this. We, we have, have this. this. Yeah. Look what we have. Like very good on them to not say anything and just hire the actor. And, and everyone, just put him in there. Because yeah. yeah. he's an actor. They can do the job. It shouldn't matter mm -hmm. what what parts but, he was yeah. born with or any of that stuff. He's an actor that can do the job. Yeah. And he was the best one for the job. Oh, yeah, he was great. Yeah. Yeah, very good. But we, we, that, that's the whole, you know, we see that everyone's saying, oh, they forced the, oh, here's another, you know, interracial family, or mm. there's, let's make the trans person uh, transitioning when they don't have to be. They don't have to play those roles. They don't have to be, just because you're this, you don't have to be, you know, like, let's not force it too much. Let's just be. And, and it was, I thought it was done perfectly. Yeah. So anyone complaining was just out there, you know, a bunch yeah, of I, I, I Agreed. I think the, I think the, the, the main complaint that I heard was that, uh, was the moving it to the high rise and that it was all like family, mom, like, mom power kind Whatever. of thing but yeah exactly whatever what are we going to have another like are we going to do the same thing again no, with I, five friends go to a cabin how many times are we going to send five friends to a cabin let's to not be, get into any spoilers yeah. <laughs> let's not get into any spoilers yet but I, I i disagree with whatever they're saying right no i i thought that a lot of the complaints of, of the this cabin. movie was were, were completely unbased so yeah. uh I, again uh before we jump to our first takes though we had a few more characters yeah uh, go ahead, keep going. Uh, I'm trying cheer. to find. So Bridget, Bridget. was Gabrielle Eccles. Mm -hmm. She was She's great. The middle child, I guess, because Danny seems like the oldest. The, yeah, yeah. Bridget, middle child, uh -huh. and then we had Cassie. Mel Fisher as Cassie. Yes. And yeah. She. This was her debut movie, I believe. Is that what I read? I don't remember. Uh, ba, ba, ba. May have been. She was really good. And Nell Fisher in her debut film. Yes, mm -hmm. it was Nell Fisher's debut film. She was very good. She was a little. She was yeah, very very good. Uh, she'll probably need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> we say that about all these little kids know, that are in these man. horror movies. <laughs> Covered in blood. There's the scene with the... I know. Well, yeah, we won't get that yet. Yeah, well, no, I know. He's, There's he's so much blood the in these movies yeah. and stuff like She's just... Phew, man. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, there's... There's... Yeah. <laughs> De debut. <laughs> so, yeah, this is our first one. Uh, yeah, I hope they have... I hope they have some uh, some therapists on. on <laughs> for these I'll be kids. all right. So, all right. Uh, yeah, we can move on. There's yeah. some other kids, but I mean the other ones. The, yeah, they're there's all like just... an opening scene, but they're they're not they're not really in the movie that much to really worry about them too much. We're just going to stick with our main cast. Yeah. We may have another one after. Maybe we'll have to talk about them if there's a scene. True. Sequel, sequel. 
Uh, Bruce Campbell does have a cameo in this. Oh yes, it yeah. is a voice cameo. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he so he appears in the cast list as dissenting voice on recording. So if you uh, there is there's a recording. not to give away any spoilers, but just like every Evil Dead, they play a recording and there's people talking and you can hear one voice yell out and mm -hmm. you can tell if you're paying attention. That's I did not. The I first mean, time I, I didn't, didn't either. Realize, the very first time yeah. when we saw it in the theater, I didn't realize yeah. it. Uh, you but told me. I, I think, what, yeah, before you watched it, I don't know, again, before we did that live stream and you told me and yeah. Makes sense. And I heard it this time. <laughs> I heard it this time. Yeah, definitely him this time. All right, let's jump to our first takes. These will be completely spoiler free. We'll give you a warning before we dig deeper and get into the spoilery stuff. Mm -hmm. So, ladies first, Steph Infection, as usual, give I, us your first take. I guess this is just a thing now. <laughs> it is. We got to have, I talk I, so much. He does. He talks you. way too much. So, my first take, so my actual first take was watching it in a theater, and I think I said it was the scariest movie I ever saw. <laughs> okay, I take that back. But <laughs> it was so scary in the theater because of the sound, and I, I really, I enjoyed it. So much more than I thought I was going to. Like, um, like we said, you know, it's different setting than the originals. I'm kind of tired of redos, and re but I was went into it with an open mind. I loved it. Kills were great. I thought the story was actually great. There was a couple little holes in it here and there. Um, got a little silly at one part, but I, I overall like, I loved it. I loved the Easter eggs. I loved. I love, like, I just, <coughs> I really enjoyed it, so. Yeah. Um, uh, that's, you know, I don't even want to get into too much with that because we'll dig deeper, but, yeah, just overall, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I really loved it, too, man. I, uh, from the opening scene, which kind oh. of felt like, you know, we'll get into when we get into our spoilers, but it felt familiar to, uh, <laughs> to jumping to completely to unfamiliar territory with this franchise. Uh... Having the whole family unit, which I usually don't necessarily go for, which, you know, I don't yeah. always like the whole family, lovey-dovey, fight for family. Like, as soon as the people start saying family, I start thinking of fucking Vin Diesel, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do it for family. Well, we didn't really get that. Yeah, no, no, I know. Yeah. But the, but the, but the judge, like, you know what I'm saying. They're like, like fighting each other. Like, I'm not as, you know, right, right, exactly. <laughs> They're more of a dysfunctional family, more like what I grew up in. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I don't usually go in for that. But I felt like the family dynamic and everything else really worked. Um. The kids were all pretty believable for me. Uh, uh, the mom was outstanding, man. She was fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Creepy. Like, she was great as, like, the mom and then super creepy once she becomes a deadite. Uh, and and Beth was good enough. I mean, I, I like Beth once she, like, once a flip, a switch flipped, let's yeah. say. That we'll get to later. Because I think she's kind of, like, through most of it, she's kind of wishy-washy, and it's just kind of, she's just kind of like, yeah, you know what? But then when, I mean, yeah, but then, like, a, a switch flips, and, and, like, I'm like, okay, now that's, now, kick some fucking ass, Beth, thank she's you. She's one of those, like, she's she was good for the part, she was a good actress, but yeah, yeah, maybe she would, there may have been better actress that could have done that part, you know? I don't know. I mean, I liked her as an actress, and I thought she was good in the role. Yeah. It just felt like the... And maybe that was part of her story arc, because we will get into that, too. Mm -hmm. we, you can very obviously see when she, you know, she's made this decision that... that yeah, but you could tell she's made it before that, just in her physical actions, just in everything that she's mm -hmm. done to, you know, doing leading up to it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, she was good. She was really good. Uh, the cast was really good in this. The direction was really good. It's a very dark movie. Everybody likes to make things very dark nowadays, which seems to be uh, yeah, another. It goes against common sense, you would think, because if if you're scared or something's going on, you're gonna turn lights on, right? That's your first instinct. But in this, the world of movies in Hollywood, nobody turns any lights on ever. Like they never. I mean, I know the. 
it's okay to say the power goes out, right? That's not a spoiler. The power oh, goes out. No. So, I mean, yeah, the power goes out. But even before the power goes out in this movie, when they first, like, like the, the, the whole apartment building itself is old, creepy, dimly lit. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's about to be knocked down any minute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which, yeah, that whole, that little tidbit wasn't even... I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess it is necessary because it explains why, it, like, the stuff happens uh, that that unlock these secrets. But, uh, but yeah, it, it was very dark. Yeah, yeah. Lighting. <laughs> very dimly lit. Dimly lit so, is what he means. So. I guess what, uh, I mean, that's what you do with horror movies nowadays. You gotta, you gotta keep people in the dark to keep them scared and wondering what it is lurking in the shadows. Because we're know. all scared of the dark, or at least we have been at some point. Even as adults, when you walk into a room that is pitch black, the fear of not knowing what's in front of you, yeah, it gets everyone a little, my toe or... anything. It could be something, we're not saying monsters, but you're just like, I can't see. Mm. And you get a little like more cautious. You get a little bit more freaked out. And, you know, even as adults, we all, we don't, we don't like the dark. <laughs> yeah, man. Illuminate that shit. Yeah. But, uh... but yeah, so the, it, it, this was really good. I, I really enjoyed it. I only had one, like one qualm with it uh when i f in the theater when i saw it i really hated it and i was just like oh i got like the biggest eye roll i maybe the second third times i watched as i watched a couple times mm -hmm. i had it on in the, in you mean the, the ending uh yeah 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 the yeah. thing the thing yes yeah yeah you could I, just say the thing because it's, yeah. it's pretty much the fucking thing well i wasn't gonna i just, <laughs> I just the thing. Yeah, but, but saying yeah. the thing, you're saying the thing because you're just not... making exactly what my comparison is. Thanks. You just <laughs> spoil my comparison. Spoil my rant. <laughs> Steph Infection, spoil my rant already. We didn't even get to dig deeper yet. I do. I the second time. <laughs> okay, don't hurt me. I'm gonna rant about <laughs> Steph Infection spoiling my rant. <laughs> it's like the second time today. I've like just answered, like said before, something before you were able to finish. Anyway. It's because you're rude and you just interrupt me. I just know what you're thinking sometimes. <laughs> Ford. <laughs> right there. Uh-huh. Um, damn it, now I forget what I was going to say. Yeah, because you know I'm thinking I want to strangle you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The second time when I just watched it, I appreciated that thing a little bit more. <laughs> I didn't appreciate it. But I no, was like, no. I hated it a little less, I guess. I was like, oh, Because I heard, right. because it... I connected it with something that the mom says in the beginning. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 I know. And I don't think too. I yeah, realized yeah. it, like, yeah, I, I was I like, get oh, it. maybe, all right. But, yeah. oh, yeah, we'll get there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh. I think we just got to start digging. Yeah, before we. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to dig, baby. <laughs> we're digging. Get the shovels, because I'm ready. <laughs> before we uh, before we dig deeper, though, in case you know, we have a few more additions up here to our what do we call this? Our uh, shelf of <laughs> of crap, <laughs> <laughs> shelf of shit, yeah, <laughs> shelf of scares, shelf of uh, whatever we can find, <laughs> shelf of scares. But we have a Necronomicon. Yes. Look at that. All right. Thanks to Steph Infection finding her Necronomicon. Where'd you find it, Steph Infection? My seven-year-old's bookshelf. <laughs> Her seven-year-old's bookshelf, ladies I, and gentlemen. I was looking for my... Parent of the year here. She stole it. <laughs> okay? Because I've had that for decades. There's a, there's a fucking ear. There's a human ear on the back on, on her seven-year-old's bookshelf, ladies and gentlemen. And I mean, there's, please don't call CYS. <laughs> there's incantations in there. Incantations. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she took it. Oh, uh, yeah. She and took I it. said, I asked everyone, does anyone know where this is? It looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> showed them Google images. You should have no. showed your seven year old. Apparently, she knew exactly where it was. I think I but, did. Uh, yeah, so there's our uh, Necronomicon. <laughs> we got our Ash plushie from Army of Darkness over here. And we uh, added a out of the box Victor Crowley. Ah, yeah. Uh, in honor of our 
Doggy Deviant voice Kane Hodder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, our critter, as always, and Godzilla on the end. And then this little guy is... Uh, See from Monster High, I think. A little know, but cat. A little scaredy cat. And then we have an eyeball made by our <laughs> puppeteer. Is this what you were doing? Maddie Meek. Oh. Makes eyeballs. Let me uh, see a Maddie Meek eyeball. And then and they ah. they sell these. Richie sells these at Rock and Roll Knife Fight. So if you want an eyeball with what's what's this part of the eyeball called? Sperm? <laughs> Aren't you a nurse? What is wrong with you? It's the optic nerve, I'm assuming. All right, well, it's the optic <laughs> nerve. It's <laughs> a sperm. <laughs> a sperm. What is An wrong with you? An eyeball sperm. I, oh, it's my God. It's going to into your brain, the sperm, the eyeball sperm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, my first take to finish it off. I would recommend this one. Go watch it on Max for sure. Yes, yeah. Put uh, the volume up really loud. Yeah, turn the lights off, volume up. Yeah. You'll dig it. Mm -hmm. All right. Break out the shovel, Step Invention! Yes, I've been waiting. It's time to dig deeper. <laughs>
excuse me, Jessica's boyfriend, Caleb, uh, vacationing at a lakeside cabin. Jessica's ill. She's uh, in bed, and and he's a douchebag. Yeah, yeah. He's the one with the drone, and and she's reading a book. She's like, I'm just gonna go inside, and well, she goes and starts reading the book, and uh, in her head, in her head, right? Yeah. And Jessica starts reciting the book. She sits up. She reads it loud. There's a lot of creepy stuff with her back to her, of course. Yes. And uh, and then she closes the book, and she gets more angry. It seems and And louder. You can hear the the voice starting to turn. Demonic. A little bit of the uh, yeah, a little little deadite, a little bit of deadite in there. And then she like jumps up. Ah, stop it! And then Jessica falls to the floor, and Uh we get the. Blah and, blah and shaking her and she runs you know gets down and, oh my god okay. and <coughs> she like seemingly dies for a second and then yeah, all of a sudden grabs, grabs her throat yeah. and uh and yeah uh, Teresa has this braid that she's been playing with obviously playing with uh through the beginning through what this was opening it b- b- before she but did, she called the she meat called sack the, the brainless okay. meat sack she brainless called her boyfriend a brainless meat sack and uh so yes uh Jessica grabs her throat, grabs the braid, and says, uh, who's the brainless meat sack now? And Scalp. uh, fucking scalps her, man. Ooh. Yeah, just right off there. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, yeah, so this, and then she goes outside, but... Well, we cut to outside. This was a very, yeah, this was a very We cut to outside. We realistic. go from rip the scalp off to cut to outside where Caleb's pissing off the dock, and the drone's just kind of floating next to him in place, and... <clears> uh, <throat> And we're we're getting a POV kind of staggering down the mm-hmm. dock towards him, mm-hmm. and he turns around and sees it, and then we cut to seeing it's uh, it's Teresa with her scalp off. <laughs> well, she's just bleeding, and it's dark blood. So yeah. when she initially gets scalped, that's why I was like, it's very, it was very realistic. It was very like fresh and pink, and you know you could see the scalp. And then when she's out there, like it would just be dripping, and it would already be kind of crusting on your face like it looked exactly like it would be <laughs> like almost black i was like oh wow that that's like because a lot of like horror films don't do this especially like they just don't look into what blood looks like when it's been out of your body for right. a period of time or what you know i don't know it all looks red or it all looks brown or it all looks yeah well it's fake blood so it doesn't turn color once it hits the air like real yes. blood does so but you the, get it's but the just two red. scenes made it you're totally opposite, which I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, and that was, uh, so yeah, scalps. So she, she walks down with the scalp uh, off, and Caleb is like, oh my God, and starts to run to her, like, what happened? And then we see the scalp, we see, I guess, Drop. Jessica's foot, and then the scalp drops yeah. next to it. And that yeah. was a great fucking shot, too, because it's like plop. <laughs> and it's all gooey. And uh, it's the, the inside of the scalp yeah. that, that lands directly for the camera to see, like, the inside of her head. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was great. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was a good shot. Uh, and then, so... Uh, she goes down. She, grabs, she walks down. Jessica walks down and grabs the drone. And he had said something before, too, like, because the girl was like, oh, you could have cut my head off. Uh, nah, it would just fuck your face up. It wouldn't really do decapitation. Propellers aren't that strong. Oh, so I don't So, of course, know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jessica now smiles, like, looks all demonic. Uh-huh. <laughs> and just Sticks herself in the face with the <clears throat> fucking drone and shoots off into the water. And Caleb, still like an idiot, just dives in to save her. I know we even had a conversation. I was like, would would you have jumped in? Because like, I would have. I If you didn't really know and you thought she was just sick and you thought something happened, he didn't really know what happened to the girl. It wasn't clear. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <clears throat> that other chick should have spoke up sooner, though. Oh, she yeah. was just sitting there like... Aah. She was probably in excruciating pain. Well, once he dove in, she was like, No, Caleb. I know. Like, why didn't you, bitch... He, I know. He waited until he dove in? Say something earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but then his head plops out and... You know. yeah, his head shoots out. Oh, he gets... You see a bunch of blood. Yeah. His head shoots out. And, uh... And then the girl's like looking out over the water and we get like one of the coolest title sequences ever. Ever. <laughs> so it's like on the lake and you see like the tree line and mountains over the back of the lake and there's sunset behind it. So everything's kind of silhouetted and up out of the water starts coming the girl. 
the, the possessed girl, Jessica, and you see mm -hmm. her head, and we get close-ups of her hands, and they're all dripping. crunched and dripping, yeah. and her toes pointed straight down, and discolored, and she's slowly rising, and as she gets to the peak of her rise, we have the letters come up behind, Evil Dead Rise, Evil Dead rise rises up behind the fucking mountains, like they were yeah. behind it the whole time, and, and then she's like slowly floating towards you, towards the camera, like it's the dock, obviously, because mm -hmm. now we're like POV of our yeah. scout girl, oh. and uh, yeah, man, that was just, Such I got chills cool, the first I time, so I was like, oh, in the theater, that's I was like, so good. I think we, I think we literally <laughs> were like, get ready, get ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, <laughs> right from that that little title sequence, man. They fucking yeah. It was it was it was great. Perfectly was placed. Great. <laughs> Perfectly yep. placed. Yeah. So then we jump to one day earlier, and just one day earlier, we uh, we start with uh, Beth, right? Do we start with Beth? Start with Beth in and the bathroom. She's in the bathroom at the gig. Peeing on a stick. Peeing on a stick, and we get a little bit about her. Yeah, we learned that she's a guitar tech, and yeah, obviously she's yeah. wasn't planning this pregnancy, and uh, and it's positive. Wah, wah. Well, we don't say that, but we but for her, the look on <laughs> the her look face, on her face, we wah, know it's positive. Wah. So then we're, we're I'm like, all right, she's pregnant. That's gonna come in later. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, then she decides to go visit her sister Ellie, and uh, mm -hmm. Ellie is our Alyssa Sutherland. Yes. And Ellie has her. Three children. Uh, three kids. And uh, unbeknownst to Beth, because Beth doesn't answer her phone. Not uh, when she's on tour. Right? Ellie, Ellie and the father of these kids had split up. Uh, like two months ago? Yeah, we don't said. have to get into that it's whole It's been scene, almost, but no, but it's just fucked up. And it's months. been almost, yeah, yeah, it's been she two said, and a half months. She said I called you twice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two yeah. and a half months, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, they're not the closest, <laughs> closest sisters. But, uh, but like, right away, you get the good, you know, the family dynamic, too, when you meet She's Beth pre and her sisters. Yeah. And, you know, Beth's a tattoo artist. I'm not sorry, uh, not Beth, uh, Ellie. Ellie's a tattoo artist, mm -hmm. and her daughter's, uh, so the one is cutting the heads off of baby dolls when we meet her and she making the Stephanie. Yes, I need a Stephanie. I know Tom you Haas are has Stephanie. a Stephanie. <laughs> Tom Haas made one. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I saw yeah. the. Uh, we should yeah, get yeah. a. We should get a picture and yeah. get up there. Yeah, Tom made. should have sent us a picture to the mailbag for this episode. Yeah, Tom. In the, in the <laughs> we we might though. include it. Maybe 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 you can pop it up. Cause send it to me later. Yeah, it's on Facebook. It's a really cool. Yeah, he did it. Oh, so I can cool. maybe find it on Facebook and put it on? Yes, you All absolutely right. can. It's All on right. there. All right, I'll yeah. try that then. Maybe we will have the picture on here. It'll be right... We'll just tell you about it yeah. later, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you're watching or listening, Tom. <laughs> We're going to force you to listen, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so Ellie's a tattoo artist. Uh, mm -hmm. Danny is an aspiring DJ. Yes. So, yeah, they live in a condemned Los Angeles uh, apartment complex. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an earthquake, and it's shaking, and that's when the kids are, so yeah, they're kind of having, kids were out kids getting, getting pizza. pizza, and Ellie was filling Beth in on her love life, or lack thereof, mm -hmm. and uh, husband leaving, etc., and uh, yeah, the, just like any good movie, a, you know, a little natural disaster unearths the hidden, cursed objects, the shit you shouldn't fuck with. And, and we've had this discussion before, but I would have... I may have not went down there in this movie, like, right after an earthquake, because it's right? very unsafe. No, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, however, like, you know, if something... If I see something in a wall, or, yeah, I'm going to investigate. Not me. I need to know all <clears throat> things, yeah. Yep. And that's why you'll never be heard from again one of these days. I mean, it's... <laughs> oh, heard here. It wasn't because of me. Oh, it's yeah. She just likes to just venture off into holes in the fucking ground and shit. This is... <laughs> <laughs> this was all part of your plan. <laughs> <laughs> you just said that claim, and now everyone has to believe that that's what happened. I don't go into holes in the ground, okay? <laughs> if something happens to me, I do not go into a hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> on, I, on my, <laughs> you just said you would. You literally just said, I, said I saw a hole in the ground. I, I didn't I go would. in. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I do it all the time. Yeah, right. 
Always just jumping into random holes. Yeah, don't don't off me, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, Ellie Tattoo Artist, single mother, Danny the DJ, Bridget the uh, Bridget's the activist. Remember, she's asking her mom, "Mom, where's my fuck the government shirt?" Or whatever the fuck it is. is it, I don't know, but she's making Down like with a, the patriarchy. Let's make shirt, Earth cool again. Uh, like poster at one point. Says something like that. And Make Earth cool again, as in stop global warming. <laughs> as, a, as a global warming pun. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> yes. I didn't get it when I saw it. I didn't get it that's either. pretty good. <laughs> Until I said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw your face and I went, oh. Uh, Before you even said it. Saw my it. face light up with the, with yeah. the recognition of yes. a dad and pun. Then I, yeah, and I. I, I love a good pun. All right, so we have our earthquake. The building is shaking. It cracks a hole in the floor. Mm -hmm. Danny the dumbass jumps in. Okay. And <laughs> Danny I mean, the dumbass. Well, he starts looking down. He doesn't jump in. <laughs> like, <laughs> dive in. He's no. like, hey. <laughs> well, he was like, he sees that it looks like an old bank down there. He's always, he well, he's, no, no, no. They, they talk about the bank before this. They talk about that's why she's making Stephanie, because Danny made that story up about the bank teller who stole money and got caught, so he oh, hung I himself. And now he walks the halls as a ghost. And it was uh -huh. actually a pretty clever story. Yeah. But, uh, but for, like a, for, like, for like Danny the dumbass to come up with. With. But, yeah. <laughs> and I only call him Danny the Dumbest because the, the entirety of what is about to happen is all his fault. Is all Danny's fault. Mm -hmm. And and at one point he's like, it's all my fault. No, no. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is, Danny. It's yeah. all your fault. Everything that's about to happen is Danny the Dumbass's fault. Yes. So if you were to just jump in that hole just like Danny the Dumbass, everything that were to happen following would be all your fault. Okay. Stephanie. <laughs> I knew you were going to call me <laughs> Stephanie. Okay. <clears throat> so he goes down, he sees the, you know, he sees that it's a bank, and he's like, oh, I'm going to get some treasures. Like, I mean, I, yeah, I could, I, yeah, yeah, you would, yeah, I could understand, like the Indiana Jones aspect of it, I understand. It's that too, but it's also like, that was a bank. But like you said, yeah, yeah, it is, it was a bank. Like, yeah, could maybe be there's money. money. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. So. And you want to be the first one down there. That yeah. is a good point. Yeah. That is a good, that's a really good point. I didn't even think about the money aspect of it. It wasn't just like, but, hey, there's a random hole. But like you said, just fucking had an earthquake. You don't know if it's done or not. You don't know if, yeah, there's always if an something aftershock. was shaken loose that could be waiting to, f you know. There's just, always not. an aftershock. Always. Right, so. but he goes down. Go ahead. And he... Yeah, he goes down and he gets, and he's like looking through a box and um, he finds some records and... <sighs> not records. Vinyls, uh, but... No, not vinyls. It, they oh, are. They were... Because records were not made. Vinyl was not in production. They were actually the vinyls. Well, and... these were phonograph records. No, but they weren't. They were actually... <laughs> they weren't wax, which they should have been. <laughs> right. Uh, they actually... Those weren't in the movie. That was one of the... Well, goofs. they weren't. They shouldn't have been wax. Whatever they because were, because wax was not being used, vinyl wasn't being used. I they know, were... but they weren't in the movie. It's a goose <laughs> that they said they didn't use the correct ones. Right, they should have been shellac. A shellac, they believe. should have been shellac. Right. Yeah, sorry, not because wax. Wax not... are cones. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. When I did read about this last time, shellac didn't even exist when those in the year. It was like the year before that was written on the thing. Mm -hmm. They actually shouldn't have been wax like cones because they said. They didn't even really exist, the shellac yet, but either way, they said it yeah, was... Yeah, they needed to make a movie, so they exist. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter, shows. whatever, it fits. Right. We're not going to get all crazy over a year or two. Um, <coughs> so he finds, you know, and he's a DJ, and he's like, oh, I found these. Three phonograph records from yeah. 1923. Um, but and he... book. Well, he didn't find the book. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he, he's hearing something, you know, it almost sounds like whispering, like somebody, something trying to get his attention. And there's what looks like almost like an altar. And, um, you know, there's a hole in it, and he can see that something's in there, and he reaches in and gets it. Now, that stuff, like, why would you? Maybe he thought it was like a pile of cash. In, or a safety deposit box. Yeah, like it could have been. So it's not like that far-fetched that this kid... But the altar, I mean, that's a little... It, but he may have not realized it was on. Now, the big giant <coughs> Jesus that he almost got booped with. That yeah, was a, that was a nice little scare. Yeah, that was a good scare. Anyway, so he goes back up, and he's got... Now, they go into the... But, I mean, doesn't this just... This is like the same... Uh, it's the same fucking... 
Pope's Exorcist? Yeah, it's the same beginning as Pope's Exorcist. I'm sitting here like, didn't we do this movie already? Well, <laughs> we did do this movie already. We also yeah. did this movie already in Pope's Exorcist. Because it's the same damn already? setup. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's why I'm comparing it to. Because it's... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You, you have... You have the church kind of, they hide things. <laughs> things of right. demonic nature that yeah, they don't. And this was so it's, hidden this, too, this is it? not even just the only two movies that have done this. They, they all have, you know, they said a prayer and then the church oh, no, yeah, hides yeah, they stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it always, always comes on earth. I mean, that's, and, that's, 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 a, that's another one of the cliches that are coming, that, are, that it's just the easiest way to. I mean, that's always been in, in horror movies. There's. Just you move into a new house and and unlock the evil somehow. It's yeah. just it's you know moving into the unknown, uh, fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then you know supernatural horror comes from that. Or yeah. if you have like you know it could be anything, stalking neighbors, whatever. Just but yeah, that's where it, that's where it all originates. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, so he gets the book, he gets the records, mm -hmm. gets out of there. Yeah. Um, everybody's worried, but they, they take the elevator, which they're told not to do. Yes. And uh, she says, never take the elevator. After an earthquake. After an earthquake. Yeah. And then she will then go on to take the elevator. Later on. And be only really a few minutes screwed. later, <laughs> as she looks at the stairs <clears throat> and completely ignores them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, who's to say that it wouldn't have happened anyway, but that's what gets her right that, in the yeah. line of fire yeah, for the evil. I think it evil. absolutely would have. But I think it was just a cooler scene. Um, yeah, to have the... <clears throat> yeah, but before that, let's get to... So Danny takes the records in and, of course, starts playing them. Him and his sister. Well, him and his sister look at the book first. Yeah, they look and at the book. he's trying to get it open, and it's got teeth. It looks different than, like, our original. Um, it's got kind of veins, uh, almost vines on it, and it's got these teeth that are kind of closed. And he's trying to get it open. And it's like a lock. She, she says, when things are hidden like that, there's a reason. Yeah. I mean, and it's just, and it's yep, so many red flags. Danny. So many red flags. So many and he's not flags. listening. He's trying to get it open, and he cuts himself, and his blood drips on the book. And of course. Voila! Conveniently enough, it opens and it, and opens. it is just some creepy stuff. And they stuff. start looking through the illustrations, and uh, she gets freaked out and tells him to close it and to take it and put it back. And he says mm -hmm. he will in the morning. But I said, You're not going to make it to the morning. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, so then, then she leaves and he starts messing with the vinyls. Yeah. And, <clears> I, oh, and there's other little stuff in between, like the little girl taking a bath and all, whatever. We don't need to yeah, we're not jumping, get into we're all that. Everything. We're going <clears> through the important parts. But Danny, at one point, when, they're, when the mom's like cleaning up and she's packing up <clears throat> boxes, <clears throat> excuse me, she realizes, I got to get rid of all my ex husband's clothes. So she starts packing up a box and she's like I'm gonna get rid of it to move on you know it's like this like moment that she realizes she has to get rid of it as Danny decides to put on one of the the uh, recordings mm. and he can't you know it's the first one was our congregation we, right. we say talking about finding the book and where they, and what the they want to do the with book. the book right. and that's where we hear our Bruce Campbell he was Wasn't he on two? I thought he was on the second two, recording. Two, it's just the one. It's oh, it's just, just the, the priest. Okay, yeah, well then it's doing the yeah, yeah. And if it's one, then yeah, Bruce yes. Campbell was in there. Mm -hmm. He makes his. That was. He's the, the one that yells out. He's the dissenting person who's like, "The book is evil. We must burn it." Yeah, like that. yeah. That was all. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's in the congregation. Uh, real quick before we move forward, though, I want to point out something with that. Uh, <clears throat> that was that does get revealed in the uh, first record before we get before he reads the incantation that we're told that this is one of three volumes oh, yes. of the Naturam de Manto. Uh, so it's a trilogy. So there's a lot of speculation and talk on the interwebs and people question if this is one book. And the move, the one in this movie is one of the other books, and oh. that there's a third book out there. So this one from the original movies with Bruce Campbell would be one of the books from these three volumes. The one in this with the teeth 
oh. is the is a second book from the three volumes of this Nataram de Monto. Well, that would be and smart. And there would be a th third book out there. That so, would be cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, then, like yeah, and the third book would look different <laughs> than these two as well, and probably have some other creatures in there. Um, yeah, yeah, some other spells and other conjurings. So yeah, it definitely opens up the world huh. of uh, of Evil Dead to more. What uh, did it look like in uh, was, uh, the remake? The, the third I one? think in the 2013 one, it, it looked just like looked a, this. A little bit different. But I, I'd have to go. I haven't watched it in a little bit. But I think it looked like our right. standard. Uh, or Necronomicon. I remember seeing a different one, but I thought it was—it wasn't from the second or the Army of Darkness. I uh, don't remember. They didn't call well, it anything different. In Army of Darkness, I think did they put some like armor on it or something? Uh, was it bound in metal or something? Definitely looked different than that, but I don't. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, but anyway, that was pretty interesting. Three, uh, three books of the dead, three Necronomicons, yeah. possibly yeah. out there. So uh, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So I mean, the, the the record, you know, you listen to it, and he reveals that he uh, continued his research in secret, and he recites the incantation and. Uh, summons the deadites. And then we see the real POV of the dead going through the whole mm -hmm. apartment complex. And yep, and as uh, Ellie is taking the laundry. It's her husband's clothes. She's oh, going to throw out. Oh, clothes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could have just tossed them aside. Yep. She uh, gets in the elevator instead of mm -hmm. <laughs> taking the stairs, and as the elevator door opens on the first floor, the evil just bang flies right. Yeah, lifts it's a really into cool the, scene. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was a good set piece. Uh, and this, the elevator was our uh, tree. The elevator mm -hmm. was our stand-in for the woods, for the tree scene, for our person in all the Evil Dead movies that gets the yes. tree ape captured. Kind of. Tree, well, it's the it's tree assault because we don't want to use the word that YouTube oh. flags. Yeah. Remember? Yes. Yes, yes, the yes. The tree yes. grabs the legs and. Yes, third. yes, yes. 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 So, Sorry. So, but some somebody always gets strung up by a tree in part one, part two. In the remake, they had the girl in, with I the just, tree. And, and yeah. so in this one, it was the. She's launched into the elevator and. Uh, and wires start coming down and getting the throat and mm -hmm. lifting her up. And it was pretty good, man. It was a cool uh, rig that they did for her. She also has literally vines tattooed all over her. She does, which is, which really is cool. another uh, nod, I think, to the Absolutely. that she was going to be the one. <laughs> yeah, I used <laughs> you know, to like right those, away. Yeah, They would absolutely. get the tree, uh, you yeah. know, they got the treeing, the, mm -hmm. tree, tr the treatment, if you Ooh, will. Oh, the treat. I got puns of my own. T R E E. <laughs> I hear you. I hear uh, you. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The vines on the leg and arm, and you know, it was very. Uh, we get it. Yeah. That was, a nice little, that was a nice little Easter egg. There's a yeah. lot of Easter eggs in here yeah. that we'll talk about as we come upon them as well. Uh, but that was definitely one. Yeah, and she, you know, she is in a crazy kind of contorted uh, spot at, at the end of it, and mm -hmm. then. And then the power goes out. The power goes out. Mm-hmm. And we cut back to the apartment, and the kids and all are uh, lighting candles or flashlights yeah. and stuff. And, and the door opens, Ellie comes back in, and she's shambling. Yes. Walking Dead-ish kind of style. Yes, very Walking Dead. And, uh, and she makes a hard left into the kitchen and turns on the stove. And your mm -hmm. question about that? I said if the power was out, all she did was just turn a knob, and the... Stove came on. Stove came on without, you know, without a pilot. A pilot so. Yeah, but I think, uh, again, and, and maybe somebody could email us or comment. Mm, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I'm pretty sure on old stoves, they didn't have an electric pilot. There was a small flame that had a small, like a gas stove. So there was one small, tiny gas that line. That was always lit. That was always lit. Like my, my, uh, like your water heater, probably like a water well, heater that it stays lit until when it's when it kicks on on its own. Then it. I meant my oh. fireplace, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, something like yes, yeah. something like that. So that could be very well. And it, being an old building, that would. 
Yeah. It could have an yeah, old stove in there. So if was, that's how old stoves work, and I'm pretty sure it is. Maybe, if maybe. If you guys at home. If anyone know. is. Because that was, I was like, what the heck? Because it wasn't just. I didn't even think about it. You pointed it out, and I was like, hey, good point. Could be a, could be a faux pas. Because usually it was just, yeah, she just turned it. So mm. there was no even click. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But uh, yeah, so then she starts just throwing eggs in the pan and just mashing them up. Um, and these eggs were like fertilized eggs. Did you notice that? There's there blood like, in them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think there was a lot of symbolism yeah. going on right here. I think That's they what were I thought heavy, too. I like, like, because this is a mother who yeah. is now, uh, who's supposed to be the nurturing and the, uh, you know, the caregiver. And, she's smashing and these And eggs are like the symbol of life. and Fetuses. Yeah, she's just throwing them in with no disregard and mashing them up. And as she's doing this, everybody's like, you know, the kids and, and sister have now come to the edge of the kitchen and like, what's wrong, Mom? We, yeah. You all right? And, and she's like, ah, very calmly. And, and her delivery was awesome on this. She talked about like how uh, I was just thinking about what was it she says? Like, uh, ripping you all open? I just, I just piece. wanna, I love you all so much, I just wanna rip you all apart, or open, and climb inside of you, yeah. so I can live <laughs> with you forever. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and that's why, like, at the ending, I was like, oh, maybe that's kind of a... Yeah, it does make more sense yeah. for that to be the ending then, I guess. Um, but also, that image of that thing, which we'll get to, is in the book, too. Yeah, yeah, it's it is. Book, yeah, yeah, so. we see that thing in the book as he's looking through it, for sure. It's still so I get ridiculous, it. but, all right. I mean, it still could have been ripped off of the thing, but yeah. <laughs> oh, it probably was. <laughs> but yeah, she uh, she starts threatening the family, and then uh, and then she, like, dies. Like, and they, like she's in the bed, dead. Yeah, I mean, she went after them a little bit, but then, yeah, let's get to when she's she's laying in the bed, she's dead, her eyes won't close, they call in the neighbor. Um, yeah, they find that the staircase had collapsed, and they're stuck. Yeah, they're trying to get her. Because they want to get her out. And, but uh, it was just one of those, like, she vomits, vomits, and she's like, don't let them take my babies, and yeah. dies, you know. Yeah, yeah. So now she's in bed, and, and uh, the, when... She, Fast forward, I mean, everyone's kind of upset, but Beth is sitting on the bed, the sister, and it, this was kind of a cool part for her to come back because, you know, she, they can't really get out. They don't know what to do. There's no service. Her sister's dead behind her and her voicemail starts playing and she's like, but it, but then it changes the words, the words yeah. and she's like, I'm burning inside. And then she turns around, or her phone cracks, and she turns around, and she's sitting up. Yeah, like, yeah. her sister's just <laughs> freaking sitting up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a creepy part. And she's like, like, what the hell? And then the kids walk in, and they're like, is she alive? <laughs> and she's like, oh, my God, she's burning up. And they throw her in the tub. Yeah, this and, was a good scene. Oh, it was great, because that, you know, they say that's what happens. Like, she's burning, and, and she's just... It, they go to throw her in the tub, and she goes, jumps up. Yeah, well, the water was boiling, too. I just Well, to she got to attach to the ceiling first. That's what she goes it in, then she to, goes up to the ceiling, yeah. and then the water starts boiling while she's up on the ceiling. And yeah. like, does she scream at them while she's up there? Is that what she does? She, ah. she goes like this, and then she kind of comes out she's like, as she's staring yeah, at the them. fingers and everything. She's yeah, yeah. With, like the creepiness of her. Oh, yeah. Like holding herself up. And this is some good rigging, too. I don't know. I, I would suspect that they actually put her up into a corner. Um, wow. And somehow. then she screams for like a while, and everyone in that building's ears are just ringing yeah, on yeah, that floor. Yeah. yeah, we get the crazy scream. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. And then she's like trying to kill them all. And it's kind yeah, of yeah. like. Yeah, We get like, like this I whole just, cat and mouse, and she's super evil, like, like I, even I just, saying some of like the nastiest well, shit like, to them. Be the one part, like, Beth, after the scene, um, I said the sister brings Cassie into her room. They like leave really quickly. And then Beth and Danny, like, kind of back up out of the door, and we see the door, and we just see her come through, and she kind of looks with that crazy uh, grin and I was like oh my god that's so creepy yeah. she's so creepy yeah so she's she's attacking them and they manage to I don't know what you know what she gets the she gets Beth with the tattoo gun mm -hmm. at one point mm -hmm. and, and gets her in the, under the eye mm -hmm. um, and then they manage to get her out of the apartment Yes. And yeah. get her out into the hallway. Or somebody comes to the door. Oh, no, the neighbor comes to the, to the door. Because yeah. he heard the scream. And this is like, 
she, everything's going back to crazy and it's just like falls to the wall really fast. Like, I'm just yeah, yeah. gonna kill everyone. I'm gonna try and attack everyone. Well, yeah, she takes that, takes the, the, she stabs what's Beth in the hand. In the hand with it, with the mirror kind of or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the piece of mirror. So um, Beth in the hand, yeah, yeah. And then, she, not Beth, it was the, the, uh, the daughter, she does the. Uh, yeah, whatever her name is. Bridget. Uh, Bridget, yeah. Um, but the neighbor comes in after all this, which kind of happened really fast, and he's like, Ellie? And she just, gah, jumps like, on jumps on top of him. They mm -hmm. get out in the hallway. She bites his eyeball out, shoots it down the other kid's throat. Bites his eyeball out. Bites his eyeball out. Spits it. And, and it flies. Ah, <laughs> and that's another Easter egg, if you remember... From the scene in Evil Dead 2, mm -hmm. where they have uh, the, uh, what's her name? Oh, I'm drawing a blank on her damn name. The, uh, the mother, the, 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 the old, the old, uh, Henrietta, Henrietta, sorry. Oh, Henrietta, Henrietta. yes. When Henrietta is a dead eye and she's in the house, why you so, and the head is trapped Henrietta in the thing. Newby. And, and. He's like jumps up and down on the trap door and it squishes the head and the eyeball shoots uh -huh, out and uh -huh. he's like, ah, no. Well, yeah. So that was the, uh, that was an homage, direct homage to that. That's yeah. exactly where that was. There's from. a lot of moments throughout this that, that I feel like hit. Oh, know, yeah. Like, hit. Well, and, and yeah, we yeah. Can't even he went like out of his way to make sure that yeah. he, he paid homage to a lot of this stuff. It mm -hmm. was very cool. Like, because, you know, some guys go in, some directors or some writers, whoever, some creative teams will go in and they think, oh, well. We're gonna do it better. And We're gonna do it totally. Do like let's. This is how they all talk. By not the way, to, not to give, <laughs> not to, not to give any fucking credence to that god awful show, but like Mindy Kaling and Velma, thinking that they could just throw away all the source material to fucking Scooby Doo mm -hmm. and make a. a snide, snippy, mean little fucking Velma that was just Mindy Kaling projecting her shitty self mm -hmm. once again, just like she does in every role. Was it but canceled yet? Oh I hope so. But that's, you know, that's what a lot of people try. That's what these pe people like to do with IPs. And, and, mm -hmm. and much to our delight, we don't get that here. This guy respects the IP. This guy, obviously, Lee Cronin hats off. He obviously respects... Sam Raimi respects the original IP, mm -hmm. respects the source material. Oh yeah, and yeah. and he goes even out of his way changes. to make homages. Yeah. Even with the little changes, it we said it from the beginning. It just felt like an Evil Dead movie. Yep, no, one hundred percent. Yeah. All right, so the eyeball in the hallway, and then she's, well, they they shut that that happens. She locks him out in the hallway. They, but then we get the peephole. The peephole scene. scene is fucking amazing. It is just. <laughs> So good. <laughs> That's like, just what's great about this too. Is it's just like keeps rolling. Like uh, it the, never it's this stops. Piece, then, this piece, then, this piece, and it's just like holy shit. That's why it was like I was so scared when I saw it in the theater because I was like, <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. What is happening? <laughs> like, I, but yeah, go ahead with the yeah, peephole scene. The peephole scene. Like I don't even know. She, Who's the first one to die? Go ahead, tell her who the first one to die is. This is my the, favorite. The little kid. The little kid. Just, <laughs> boom, just slam that little slam motherfucker in the wall. There's blood everywhere. He's just slumped over. Over, uh, they're like, we don't give a fuck about killing kids. Boom. I yes. mean, I don't even remember. That. I just remember here, like, yeah, the gunshot, and I guess he dies, the older guy. I don't know. Yeah, she's, yeah. Well, she's just throwing people. He, uh, he shoots, or she goes down, and then he's standing there, I guess. Yeah. And then you just see his, like, feet go out. Yeah. And he falls. It, the whole scene, like, the whole thing, you're just, like, watching. And it's very, like, you know, fisheye kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. You're in the people the whole in the time with, in, like, a giant fisheye lens. So you're just... You're hearing everything, and you're just catching the glimpses going back and forth of the fucking carnage. <laughs> yeah, it's just it was it was done it was, so awesome. Yeah. And then at the end, she's like, "Let me back in." <laughs> <laughs> she's all smiling. I feel just, better yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy's better. <laughs> yeah, she's so good. Oh, it was really good. Yeah. Uh, and then of course, the stupid little kid lets her in. Well, that's later. opens the door. That's a little bit. But yeah, she not does. that much later because this that's was after the yeah. yeah. So after that, we get to the uh, yeah. It wasn't that much later. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess Bridget starts turning. Bridget starts turning, and she eating glass. Before she starts eating glass, she starts like realizing she you know she wants to she's definitely off. She wants to fix her face. Her face is like breaking. Um, 
And she's made it known a couple of times now that Danny's a fucking asshole and this is all his fault. <laughs> oh, yes. She, she has. I told she does you. not mince words. You I that book. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yep, it's this all is all fault, your Danny. fault. <laughs> Goddamn Danny. <laughs> fucking um, dummy. Danny dumbass. So she's in the kitchen. And, uh, yeah, then we get the little girl going well, over. No, she eats the glass, right? Not yet. She doesn't eat the glass. Oh, she goes into the kitchen it. and messes with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. She the starts vomiting and then the up, like, bugs. And then she starts pouring, like, what looks like oil out of her orifices. So she's kind of having a moment in there as a little girl. Doesn't know it's, you know. You know what I think that is? And I didn't get this on the first two watches. When we were watching it today, I was like, that's tattoo ink. I, I originally called it ink in our last one. That's what I think it was, because she got her with the tattoo gun, and that's how she infected her. Oh, yeah, maybe. So because in, but that explained why it would be black and inky. That it, it, did, like, it looked like, like um, ink from like an octopus or something. Like that's what, but that image showed what looked like tentacles coming out of a per, yeah, yeah, yeah. person's mouth. So I almost thought it was like a Cthulhu kind of like monster. I don't know. Because the image in the yeah, I remember, I remember. You so then about. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, it's ink. Could be, yeah, yeah. It, could but be. it could be. But they I all thought, could tie I, I, in. And right. Maybe it's like I, I kind of tied it with the tattoo gun because that it could was be both. How she they could have, the, yeah, they could have said like, oh, we got well, that, that, this all fits, you know, like. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but pretty clever, pretty you know, and, and good. It's like, and I guess also because it's a kid, they don't want to have a kid just gurgling blood and. Even though she was like chewing glass. Yeah, I'll tell you what I could have done without the glass swallow and the poking through the neck close up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, don't get me wrong, great fucking effects, man. It was great fucking effects. It It definitely made me cringe, but it really made me cringe. I was like, "Mm, Uh, I can't do the eating glass thing. No, 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 no. No, I hate the eating glass thing. But, I mean, it's effective. You got me to fucking squirm. <laughs> a couple things made you that, that uh, yeah, 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 grater. Yeah, few. Oh, yeah. Well, that's right after that's the right eating after glass. This, yeah. We get the cheese grater. Oh, the cheese grater on the fucking calf. Ouch. Dude, that's always, like, ever since I first saw a cheese grater, <laughs> that was, like, my greatest Fear that somebody would just grate of, your skin of being around the cheese grater. I was just like, man, what happens if I just like fall and I'm just like, oh, on the cheese grater? Is this oh, <laughs> is this, was this your nightmare? This was a, this was a chronic wow. recurring fear. As oh ch- now, I'm kidding. No, 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 but I really thought that. I was like, I don't want to fuck with that thing. That thing looks dangerous. I'd I don't even. Like I could like trip them. and fall and just rip my face off. Do you even use them for like Parmesan cheese and stuff? Nah. Well, you don't eat pasta. No. But like, <laughs> I, when I got yeah, I get like a little nervous when I get close to. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. throw this and, block of cheese out. And I come from <laughs> Italian family. This is not big enough. <laughs> I come from Italian family. We had all different cheese graters. We had the John, like that big one that's in the movie with the little. And just I never had Yeah, dude, we had that. We had a bunch yeah, no, of them. No, no. And we had another one that was like this little hand jammy where you were just like a, like a fucking little, it was just like a flat saw. You just go, yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, yeah, you had that one? Yeah. Okay. I still have that one. Oh, look at you. Oh, you look too. It's a little. Little That's what I'm saying. When, the, when you don't the, have the big good one, you can take off leg pieces with. Well, when the oh, I'm getting one. I'm bringing it here too. It's going to be right, right in the center of our next podcast. <laughs> oh God, no! On our shelf. Oh shit! That's awful. No. <laughs> All right. Anyway, anyway, the cheese grater was pretty brutal. So in this meantime, uh, when this is happening, uh, the little girl, for some reason, looking at her spooky ass mom. Yeah, decides, decides it's a good to idea to let her in. Unlock the door. <laughs> Which the door comes wide open, she grabs her by the neck, and she's holding her up, and now, you know, they got to fight to lock her out. To lock her back out. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so then they go in, and they're they're fighting with the sister, pretty much. <coughs> well, Bridget, Bridget goes at Cassie. Yeah. And Cassie just instinctively holds up Stephanie. Yeah. Goddamn Stephanie and saves it goes the through the fucking mouth yeah. and pales her through the mouth and through the back of the head. This was a good fucking scene too. And Bridget like pulls the, slowly pulling it out. And then once it's all the way out, she just kind of plops. Yeah. Plunks down. Yeah. 
and we think she's dead or dead for right now. So yeah, we'll they get, tie her up. And tie, yeah, like, of course they put her in like a sheet and tie her up so she's extra scary looking. Yeah, while she's laying there. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, Danny ties her up and puts a sheet over her and all that stuff. Which, He's like, I thought, you know, might as well. Might as well tie her up. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so then Danny tells Beth about the records, and Beth's like, where's the fucking records, man? Yeah. I gotta listen to the records. And uh, she goes to listen to the third record. Yeah. Just jumps right to the last record, uh, just to get to the... Just hoping that maybe there's something. There's some answers. Yeah, some answers. So, while she is, uh, starts, she puts the headphones on because, of course... She doesn't want it to play out loud. I guess, man. That's why but, I think, yeah. She didn't want she didn't want to take that chance. That's the impression I got. I thought it was <laughs> But then you can't hear anything. Well, like, yeah, I would have one on. You can't one hear on. a kid in distress screaming. Or your you sister can't hear dead your sister climbing in the ceiling from coming in. She yeah. there that was another little tidbit. They always drop these little things, and you always know that's going to mean something later. They just show a random cat in the air vent. The guy's like, have you seen my cat in the air vent? <laughs> it's going to mean something later, and then later on you hear, meow, and the dead eye mom's like, air vent. Doesn't say her, but that's what, like, you know, she's like, yeah. oh. I and know. Then that's how she gets, you know, she's climbing, next thing you know, she's climbing in the bed. But it was done, it was done well, <laughs> because I thought when he, when I originally, like, I didn't put that together. I didn't think that it's going to come up later. I thought he oh, was... Oh, it's always foreshadowing. <laughs> they always no, foreshadow but I thought, all that shit. I know, but the way I, I noticed it, but I thought he was hearing, like, kind of like the spooky stuff going on and thinking it was his cat. Oh, wow. Well. Like, I thought it was because... Well, they, sh did, they showed the cat at one point. I know, but I don't know. I just was like, oh, maybe he's hearing... Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Something. Well, at any rate, yeah, she gets in... Uh, and this is when, what was it, Danny was, uh, oh yeah, they had shut the door so that Beth could listen on the headphones, and that's when they, the dead Bridget follows them. Oh, yeah. And that was a great scene, too. Yeah. And I was talking to the stunts on that one, because uh, there was some cool rigging on that. Uh, like, so the two of them come walking around the corner out of the room, and they're just looking around, the, you know, they're not looking behind them, and just... Bridget still in the uh, sheet covered it with blood from the face and everything is like floating <laughs> behind them, just be just right behind them, uh -huh. silently just floating. You're just like, oh my god! I know. It's so <laughs> she's not tied up anymore. <laughs> no, she's not. And uh, and then they cut to like the feet dragging. Yeah. And it's a cool like like it's a rigging. You know, it's rig it's a wire rig, and they whoosh, they float you. And uh, we could do some stuff like that someday. Yeah, let's Put some do people it. in. Uh, and some harnesses and, and I don't want my wire them up. <laughs> but yeah, you, you float them down, and uh, and Danny uh, turns around as as uh, the youngest sister Cassie says uh, says something to him, be careful or something like that. And Danny turns around, and is like, oh my god, and he sees the thing, and he runs to get Cassie out of the way, and he it swoops in on Danny. Yeah, he, he has had the, the knife, knife because. Beth had a, gave it to him and said, just in case. Just in case. So right, while she was in the, yeah, he's, listening to the recording. He stabs uh, Bridget. Stabs with Bridget the sheet. with the yeah. sheet on, yeah. She pulls it out, yep. pulls the sheet off. Cassie hides, and then Bridget just yeah, starts yeah. fucking Danny up. Yeah. And again, just like the taunting of, this is all your fault. You're, this is all because of you, Danny. Good job. She all said at some you. point, now you wish you would have put that book back. Yeah, or yeah. Some, or didn't yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, something like that. I wish like you would have put that book back now. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and then she stabs the thing through his bicep. And oh, I was yeah. just like, oh, ah. is, oh, fuck, man. Yeah. And then, what, shoulder? And she stabbed him a few times. It's probably as hard he died. Yeah, so. And then. Uh, In his chest. Yeah. Um. And then Ellie is kind of fighting. Well, right. Ellie is at that point. 
She's in with Beth. Well, yeah, Beth and uh, Ellie are in the room. Oh, I thought it was Ellie a really sees, cool show. I'm sorry, Beth sees Ellie's shadow, a reflection in, in the, the window, window. Yeah. as she's listening. And that's like right before she's like, <gasps> and then jumps up and, you know. I thought it was really cool because she, she stops the recording. Well, yeah, she, that was. She puts her finger down and yeah. opens her mouth and it comes out, yeah, you know. that was a really cool. Comes uh, out of her mouth, you can And hear. again, yeah, yeah, so it was like, uh, yeah. Her fingernails are long and really pointy and black, and she has the phonograph. It, she just puts her finger on it, and it just starts going on its own. And she opens her mouth real wide, and I, I probably CG'd her mouth a little extra wide probably. on that. Probably, yeah, I would think so. But it sounds like the phonograph thing, like yeah. her mouth is projecting. Yeah, it was cool. The recording. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as she's doing it, Beth grabs a screwdriver off the table behind her and runs up and vroom right in her neck. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of see Ellie just kind of stop and look at her. And then we cut to the other room and Beth comes flying, crashing through the door. <laughs> One thing that we should just mention really quick is on this third uh, recording, what she does here is the guy, the priest say, mm. I thought I had to, you know, the only way to get rid of them was to cut them all up into little pieces pretty yeah. much. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. He goes, they're still outside my door. Uh, you just have to run away from them. So we kind of get this glimpse of, you can't destroy it. Yeah, you can't does kill it, the deadites. Yeah, it doesn't matter what form they're in, you can't really kill them. So then we cut to, you know, they collapse now. The deadites are all kind of like dead in the moment on the floor. So Beth and Cassie get a chance to run out of the apartment. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we well, Danny's dead, and... and For um, now. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. He hasn't turned yet, but yeah. he's dead. So, they're, yeah, the uh, Beth and Cassie are trying to get out. <coughs> and uh, what do we get here? Oh, she grabs... Uh, they're trying to get that stairway open or something. They're trying to get a... Oh, no, it's for the fire escape. They're trying to get the door for the fire escape mm -hmm. to get outside, the outside fire escape to get away. Yeah. And she can't get... She's kicking it, and then she's like, oh, yeah, I'll get the uh, the shotgun and blow the lock open. Yeah. And when she goes to blow the lock open, Ellie appears. And uh, and I think she taunts her, too, and she's called her a groupie then, too, or something. Oh, probably, yeah. But, she, uh, yeah. but at any rate, she, gets brought up a lot. she winds up blasting Ellie's leg off with a shotgun shell, like taking the leg clean off just above the knee, blasting the opposite arm off. Uh, so Ellie falls to the floor. and uh, This is when they start forming into Well, that's what, yeah, yeah. So then, uh, so uh, Beth's going to try and get Cassie out of there now, and... Uh, this is when they go to the elevator. Mm-hmm. And this is when... Well, all the... All the <clears throat> even though Ellie's down and can't move, she's bringing the other uh, people she's killed back to life as deadites. And she finally says the line, uh, no one's getting out, you'll all be dead by dawn. Mm -hmm. Dead, by, dead dawn. by dawn. Dead, dead by, by dawn. Dead by dawn. And we get a dead <laughs> by dawn line, which is another great yeah. fucking Easter egg in there. Great homage mm -hmm. to the classic. And... Uh, so they kind of, uh, well, Ellie and Cassie get into the elevator. Beth and Cassie. Uh, Beth and Cassie, I'm sorry. Beth and Cassie get into the elevator. Ellie's arm and legless on the floor. And uh, the other, like the people from the hallway are, are moving their way down. But now we get reanimated uh, Danny and Bridget. Mm -hmm. And they come out into the hallway to their mom. And we get our little bit from the beginning where they start shoving their hands inside of her and she's moaning and it's really weird. And this is really weird. <laughs> they're like reaching into her like stomach and they're like pushing their way inside of her and and and, and, and the book, we see the book in the other room and it kind of starts flipping through the pages and it goes to that page that we saw earlier with this formed thing, which is the only thing you call it, because it looks like John Carpenter's thing. thing yeah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. literally like right out of John Carpenter's thing. Like one 
or has multiple heads at one point, but there's a lot of arms and legs all over the place, and it's kind of spidery, arachnid-ish looking, yep, with yep. a center mass, mm -hmm. uh, and it has the main head of the mom, and then the two kids' heads, and uh, one of them is burned up from, didn't we? Yeah, we had Ellie, uh, Bridget got burned with fire. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right, that's right. That. They had a good, nice yeah. little fire burn, another stunt. Shout out to, uh, I don't know who it was, but somebody did that fire burn. So, yeah, they're, they're forming into the thing, and... Uh, and it's like, and then we see it like as as the um, elevator finally starts moving for them. They start getting filled up. Yeah, it starts getting filled up. But we also see something shoot up into the duck. We don't get a full view of the thing yet. We just see yes, like a couple legs straggling uh -huh. up into the duct because this giant fucking arachnid human just amalgamation can up fit and... into a fucking air duct this fucking big that a yeah. cat was just barely able to fit into her. Yeah. But why the fuck not? Yeah. It's a movie. So, yeah. it's got to get down to the basement somehow and fuck shit up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, now we we get the elevator down to the Which is my favorite floor, part. But the water's, uh, well, the blood is filling up. And yeah, because it was a... And then they spill out just well, yeah, like it's the like shining. The shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an homage to I the shining that. for sure. Yeah. And, um, and uh, I did that on purpose. And a, and a, and a, and a fuck ton of blood. Yeah. All practical. So oh, it's yeah. another another homage to the originals. Just going and and uh, and uh, you know every part of this franchise just going overboard with the blood. That's a staple. So we we gotta stay true to our roots here mm -hmm. with the Evil Dead. Uh, and they come flying. And, and imagine being the fucking kid. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Being in an elevator filled with blood. All right, hold your breath, honey. Here's all the blood. All right, and I said, I know. <laughs> just going through. I know. I mean, I, they probably had a stunt double. You, they probably could have found like somebody small enough. Maybe I don't know, man. That's a tough one. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, well, we'll but it was a good try. scene. But yeah. again, I hope they have some therapists for that little actress. <laughs> <laughs> You're just in corn syrup, honey. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so then after that, they get out to the... Basement. Or the, the parking the garage. The parking garage, yeah. And, uh, and then our amalgamation shows up. And we had the... Here. Yeah, like this whole thing. I mean, it They're was They're fighting okay. it. It was fun. Uh, this, uh, it was just By this point, weird. I was like, all right, is this over? Yeah, uh, well, what? I didn't get the thing. I thought it would have been... Like... Even as deadites, and if this is like the the book of the dead to like take over, like why would you? Are they going to just form some ginormous blob to take over the world? Is that what it is? Because that blob, why wouldn't you wait until you were all? Because they were super. They were more powerful as like regular deadites. Yeah. Than they were in yeah, this they blob. Yeah, they moved awkwardly, like watching it walk around. Like when you, just like, I, don't, I just didn't get that mm. that was like the next stage that should have happened yeah. right then and then. It's, that not, was a, it's not an evolution, it, yeah, but I guess it could, it's just meant to be like a... Uh, they have to go through these stages. Uh, not even. It's just meant to be like a, 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 you know, like a finger in the face of God type of thing, like a, a, an abomination against humanity, an abomination of life, you know what Maybe. I mean? Like yeah. taking this fucking life that's beautiful and just mashing it into this fucking abomination. Yeah, it's very well. <clears throat> that could have been the only point of it. Because uh, that's the only thing I can come up with. I'm like, what the fuck is this thing even in here it's for? Better than Unless they were just trying to make a, you know, throw something out and be like, hey, let's do an homage to the thing and have a, no, them all come I, together as the thing sense. at the end. No, what you said makes more sense. So we're in the parking garage and we've already had the wood chipper foreshadowed prior to this. Oh, yeah. A couple times. Yeah. And, uh, but we got a bunch of our Easter eggs here as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, Beth and Cassie are in the basement or in the or in the parking garage. The the thing comes looking for them and uh, it's kind of creeping around the car and they're like, okay, ready, run and they're running and she hits the fucking thing so the gate will come down and and this part I found a little weird too. <clears throat> and again, tell me if you felt this as well. <laughs> you know where I'm going. I, with this. No, I don't because okay. I did, I missed so the, it this last time. So the, we the gate's coming down, right? And 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 here's Cassie and Beth, right? And and you're Beth, and this is the you're the last one of your niece nephews, the last one alive, yeah. right? So Beth says to Cassie, "Slide under," and then Beth goes first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Cassie goes second. 
No. Motherfucker, I would have shoved that little bitch under that motherfucker so fast and been yes. like, go, bitch, boom! Yes, and then no. I would have been behind her. Yes, we talked about There is about no this fucking way. Time. I forgot about it because I, 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 I don't know what I was doing. I wasn't paying attention when we just rewatched it. There's no way I slide through no. there and leave an eight-year-old girl to come no. through second and be like, slide through, let's go! I, it's, <laughs> Follow it's, me! And this is another thing we even talked about, like, scream and, like... Scream when she me. left her girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, you go first, babe. Oh, my guts are ripped out. No. Okay, I'll go first. Mwah. No, <laughs> you're not going to leave your girlfriend there who obviously can't... Who needs help. No, but yeah. any child, even if it's not my, like, blood, I see right. a child, no, yeah. I'm, like, shoving, and there's de a deadite thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the thing's coming us. for it. <laughs> I'm not just hoping that you follow me. Right. No, no, exactly. I'm not... Sure Shouting instructions and hoping you understand them as we're running from John Carpenter's creation behind us. I'm shoving your little ass. I don't even care if you get hurt, man. Rather hurt than dead. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go, go to the ER or the morgue, bitch? Get under that motherfucking yeah. gate. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. So, so yes, Beth slides under first. Cassie slides under and then immediately gets her leg grabbed by the thing and yanked back under as the fucking chong comes down. Of course. And is just and Beth's just like, ah! And like, I bet you wish you fucking shoved her through first now, didn't you? But we wouldn't have that <laughs> panic moment. No, yeah, we wouldn't, wouldn't, and we wouldn't get our other Easter eggs. So we already have Beth with the shotgun. So she starts bashing her way through. Cassie runs, or she drags Cassie, oh, the thing drags Cassie into, like, the, into the, inside the wood chipper fucking thing, and throws yeah. it in there for some reason, and it's got the chainsaw, and it's like, we just want your head, and it's getting the chainsaw ready, mommy just wants your head, and da, 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 and it's going to cut off Cassie's head, just like Cassie cut off the fucking baby doll head. That's uh, what, Poetic yeah. justice, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I catch you, I catch you there. Uh, Lee Cronin and your <laughs> clever callback writings. Yes. Uh, so yeah, yeah, they're gonna cut her head off, and uh, but they talk about it an awful lot for some deadites, I and know. they don't really get to it. And then meanwhile, Beth's just like smashing in the fucking gate. Yeah. And, that, and the right. worst worst security gate ever, because she just like, it slid through it's it like it was gonna stop a monster. Well, it's a but now she just bashed in that fucking thing with the butt of the gun and gets in anyway. So then she rolls up and she shoots the thing and the thing throws the fucking chainsaw at her and she falls, ducking the chainsaw. But we see the chainsaw kind of fly. And that's yeah. when we kind of get our whole... That was kind of like when the chainsaw was flying in slow motion when Ash jumps up and puts like, her hand comes. in it. But he's not going to do that because not, they're not cutting her hand off in no. this one, obviously. But still, it fits. But it was... Yeah, yeah. But well, we got our chainsaw and there was our next little, uh, mm -hmm. next little Easter egg. Um, and, oh, well, actually, before we got the chainsaw, we got a Buick. Oh. <laughs> we got another Easter egg, because they first get into the Buick, uh, yeah, and the yeah, creature yeah. comes in when they first yeah. are trying to get away. Yeah. They get into a yellow Buick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like right. Ash's right. yellow Buick, except yeah, this one was right. a station wagon. Okay. And Ash's was a sedan. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, yeah, they that. got into a yellow Buick. Uh, I think it might even been, like, same model and year. Very close okay. uh, to I Ashes, even, yeah. But, but yeah, it was a station wagon instead of uh, instead of the uh, the the mm -hmm. sedan, which fits because it was probably the mom's. It was probably yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was the mom who well, it was, have a station wagon. Well, was because at the end wagon. of the movie we saw the keychain. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. keychain inside. Yep, yep. It was theirs. Yes, it was their car. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very coolly Cronin. Very coolly Cronin. Yeah, like everything with the thing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she smashes her way in. He gets the, the throws the fucking uh, chainsaw at her. Well, the thing then grabs, comes down on top and is grabbing Beth and pulling her in. And Cassie runs out and turns the thing off, the, the, turns the wood chipper off just in time. Like yes. the thing turns on the wood chipper and it's pulling Cassie in. It's going to put wood uh, Cassie. Uh, sorry, pulling Beth in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull put Beth into the wood chipper and it's taunting her the whole time, talking shit, of course, because that's what deadites always do. Mm -hmm. You got to talk shit to you and disrespect you while they're fucking torturing you and killing you. Yes. And uh, or else they wouldn't be deadites, right? So, uh, so yeah, uh, Cassie runs up, shuts it off. Beth breaks away, and uh, she sees the chainsaw still mm -hmm. running and and. Uh, Gets a hold of it, and we get our, uh, well, she's covered in blood, too. It I looks just like Ash. Ash. Yeah. Uh, like, the shirt that she's wearing now is, like, drenched. 
her hair's like around her face and she just looks very much in the face yeah. and the, fe the eyes and her her cheekbones her facial yeah. features and that's probably why they similar, went with yeah. her she's yeah. uh, very yes very ash like mm -hmm. when covered in blood and standing and holding a chainsaw and uh, and she signals for Cassie to turn the chainsaw or to turn the wood chipper on which Cassie does and she runs up and just starts fucking chainsawing the the thing into the wood chipper mm -hmm. and psh, <laughs> crunching it up and spitting it everywhere and you see the fucking spout turning psh, spraying all over the place everywhere spraying everywhere all over the parking garage and even in the end that, and, uh, that head had something to say yeah 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 this, uh, the head said uh yeah, because she said to her earlier, you look like mom. Have you yeah. been sleeping? Have you been sleeping? You look like mom. Yeah. So so looking like mom's not a compliment. Mom didn't get much sleep, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but she did say, hey, I, I don't get much sleep either. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. she said something about... At the end, she yeah. said, you know, you, you do, you do, you really do, you said, you really do look like mom. Uh, and, and you're, you're going to mess, mess it up, up just like her, too. Yeah, yeah. And then she uh, puts the chains up and... Yeah, really good, you know, vibrating that skull, and you're seeing, I mean, it was pretty graphic, the fucking shoulder bits being pulled off into the wood chipper as she's mm -hmm. chains on down on that fucking head, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. It was pretty good, and then she, like, kicks the head in the last, after she says that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that's and, good. Uh, and she walks away with the new ash. Yeah. She leaves the new ash mm -hmm. uh, with Cassie in tow and uh, taking Cassie to therapy, I hope. I hope so, too. <laughs> but it's not done yet. No. Because... Then we cut to, you know, it's now dawn. Yeah. And we uh, see somebody come into the parking garage who lives in the... Uh, this was complex. My, yeah, this is like my favorite moment because I was like, oh, I knew immediately who it was. Mm -hmm. um, so it turns out it's Jessica mm -hmm. from the opening scene. And remember, the whole movie, the bulk of the movie, takes a place a day before our opening scene. So Jessica's on her phone talking to Teresa. She's yeah. FaceTiming Teresa. FaceTiming Teresa. And this is when we see Teresa playing with her braid. <laughs> uh-huh. And she's like, I don't want to go. And she's like, oh, come on. And all my friends bowed. And, you know. Yeah. Or, she, or no, she goes, oh, is it going to be a lot of people? I don't want to just be me you and your boyfriend. Oh, like, she God. says something like that. Yeah, and she yeah. goes, no, there's a lot of people coming. Well, <laughs> obviously, we see in the... Uh, the original opening. or yep. seeing that uh, nobody else is there. Yeah. But she gets in. She's all like, she's got, you know, she's looking like she's going to like Derby Downs. Like she is just. Yeah, yeah. She's ready for some vacation. Yeah. And as she gets in and adjusts her rearview mirror, she sees blood everywhere. Blood and, and the wood chipper. So and she gets out. She goes to like look, and she's like, oh! and that's when we see our dead. Kind of fly view again. Yeah, here it comes, and it's getting her. Yep. And Bang. it got her. Cut. Got her. I love that. I love that because I was like, oh, that's where. Because at first I was like, what was that beginning? Was it just like a cool moment? Like, but it, it yeah, didn't yeah. even feel. I didn't question it that much, even. Just, no, you were just like, okay, this is... Uh, it's just showing that this can happen. Yeah. Like I, I felt like it was like, okay, uh, well, I thought that I thought that they were going to get back to the woods sooner. When we first saw it in the theater, I that. thought they were going to start there and it was going to go a day earlier and we were just going to get a little bit of some people leaving the high rise and yeah. then they're eventually going to get back to the woods and eventually we're going to catch up to this point that we just had and then the movie's going to start you know like i was I like thought, oh we're yeah. gonna have it but but that's the thing for the next sequel though is when the movie can start it can yeah because that's where you could pick up the next sequel is because you just there's where the evil doesn't die even though they fucking put it through a wood chipper it was brought back to the woods, and now we're back to the setting of a yeah. uh, of of the woods again. Yeah, I thought. It, yeah, I thought that was cool. And, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was very well done. Again, aside from the thing, uh, the creature, which I just eh, didn't really work for me. I get what they were going for again with some of the reasoning that we came up with while we were talking about it, which I didn't think about as much before. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
But yeah, I just felt like that didn't work as well for me. But overall, I thought the movie was excellent. I, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, so did I. And, and, and I, even the ending, because the ending was great. It was just a great way to end, because you're ending with the beginning. I know, and that's why I was like, <laughs> oh, it, with this, but even with my, you know, kind of like distaste for the thing, I yeah. was like, now even hearing some things that you're saying, I'm, I'm like, all right, maybe it, it made sense. It seemed a little silly, but I will say that I thought it was a lot scarier in the theater than when we just, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. just, it felt. Yeah, because we had, we had the, yeah, we had the lights on and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. watching the theater with the lights off to be way yeah. scarier. And louder. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, my only rant is on the thing in this. I'm not going to go too long on it. Uh. We kind of, you kind of did. Yeah, I kind of already did my rant on it, and uh, yeah, I just wasn't feeling the. I, I think I thought they, man, it was almost like, like in the uh, superhero movies where you have this really awesome movie and really awesome fights, and then at the very end, it's like just this CGI <clears throat> slugfest between your hero and some big CGI bad guy who you know eventually he's going to beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it was just like... Uh, like you It want... felt a little anticlimactic, I guess. And again, I kind of feel where after. they're going for. Well, no, I, and yeah, I get... so then that, that's why I was like, yeah, it made it feel... But I, I, I mean, and I get, like, it does work with... And, and, and again, it, it gives you the... It gives you the parts that you wanted with with lots of gore and shit to spray all over the place to, to pick up to, to do that first scene and to get us to that, you know, next step out back out into the woods or whatever. Because, I mean, ideally, this could be, again, this is a different book. Excuse me. So we don't know where the other Necronomicon is now. Yeah. Yeah, true. Um, man, could you imagine if they finally get all, they, they have movies for each different book, and then they have one movie where all three books get united, and the fucking apocalypse of Evil Dead? Whoo! That's got to be done. Like... So, Hire me to write that and direct it, please. That's got to be done well, because that could just turn into a shit show, even if you're writing it. Oh, I know. But can... I would love to collect the paycheck and write that shit show, please. <laughs> if anybody could, could write a mm -hmm. shit show for you, it is I. <clears throat> so, uh, And you'll have some awesome stunts as well. Yes. There were, that... some, there were some good stunts in this, some good yeah. wire work and stuff. Absolutely. Um, good prosthetic work, some good... Uh, mm -hmm. Lots of good makeup oh, yeah. effects, really good makeup effects. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all the Easter eggs, fun stuff, man. So, any trivia or anything you want to hit us with, Steph Infection? Um, I was trinkling them in as we were talking. Um, I was going to, after I, I was going to read our mailbag and then maybe, well. Was, well, let's hit the trivia real quick. There's only a couple, couple things that I found. Um, I'm trying I feel like the I'm... film was originally meant to release, oh, yeah. uh, just like a lot of these that we're finding with these horror movies, exclusively through HBO Max via direct-to-streaming, but it performed so strongly during test screenings, the studio decided to release it theatrically instead. Yeah. Which, Thankfully, because I'm glad yeah. I saw it in the theater. It was yeah. so worth seeing, yeah, seeing it in the theater. Absolutely, yeah. That's why, if you didn't, I mean, still watch it, but... Uh, yeah, it was so much better in the theater, I thought. Mm. Oh, here's one. So, director Lee Cronin stated in an interview that 6,500 liters, or 1,720 gallons. 1,720 gallons. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I read that so weird. <laughs> Fake blood were used for the movie. <laughs> oh, wait, get back to the pizza. I, well, called... that's in his email. Oh, gotcha. That's okay, why... okay, we'll wait for that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, here's the thing about the records. Found in the vault with the Necronomicon was recorded in 1923. Disc style records weren't invented until 1930. Yes. So that is a faux pas. Yeah. Beth, the character of Beth, her story arc. I mean, it was very, uh, like, very obvious. <laughs> like, when she finally, like, oh, and, you yeah. know, and, and the whole thing, you know, like, like, this whole thing starts off with her. Having the pregnant, taking the pregnancy test, and she's obviously not happy that she's pregnant. She doesn't want to be a mom. She has a career and all that kind of stuff. And of course, by the end of the movie, uh, she decides that you know we we know just through her actions, she's already decided she's going to keep this baby. But uh, she it doesn't she even say says, that. She just says she says you, something. Are, later. She says, "Are you going to be a mom?" And she said, "Yes." yes. 
But she's now but even she a said, mother to her 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 niece also. True, so but it's she, like, but you know she's saying yes as in she's that. accepting the fact that she's going to keep this kid. Now. But I she's think, made the decision to keep the but kid. But I think they needed that because this month it starts with a mother, basically dying and killing some of her children, and this aunt who never wanted to really be a mom. They they kind of had to have that have that moment where she had a reason to ask her, Are you gonna be a mom? You know, I don't know. I, I think yeah, it went yeah. it, it made sense in the movie. We start with a mom that ends up, you know, dying and then Yeah, but I guess that's where some people might be like, Oh, this is it's a message. <laughs> a message <laughs> like the message is I mean There is no message. You it's could just, actually argue uh, I, I, I mean, I, I could be controversial here. That's not. And just... You could argue that that is sending the message of don't go be the first woman sound tech in that position in your career you said ever. She's not going to do that. Go have a baby instead. Where, I, where did you hear that you can't be a professional I, person I and a mother? Because I, I am, so uh, I don't know. Yes. You absolutely, that's not, it's not even about choosing different, you don't have to do one and not the other. She I was just stayed, it was. I'll tell, being, in, being in show business, I'll tell you this. If she was up for that. It doesn't matter. She, it does matter. Will you stop interrupting me and listen? I know you're a mom, so you don't want to hear this, but she if she were to, she said she was up for the promotion to be the first woman mm -hmm. in that position ever. That means she is actively up for it. If she decides to keep a baby, she's going to have to take maternity leave. She's going to have to take time off. Do you think she's going to get the promotion? I'm if she tells them that she's going to, she's pregnant and going to keep a baby? I'm saying forget about being pregnant. She now ha is a mother to her niece. She has to take care of her niece. So I honestly thought she was losing the baby halfway through that movie, and I said that to you. I think you need to just put that aside and not think she's going to have to have a baby. She's going to have to give up a promotion. She's going to like you're thinking way too much into it. She's a mother now to her niece. Uh, Forget that baby. I guess that man. baby might not ever even come out. Who knows? I guess you, you know? know. I just get tired of the messages, all the heavy-handed. Try and uh, I don't fit into a into a little box, and I just feel like these movies always try and fit you to to try and put you in a little box at the end. You always see, like, like the, you always see, uh, you get it with these other movies too, with like these small town people who always want to, who dream big. And then at the end of the movie, they realize they had it big in their small town all along. Yeah, I didn't get so that go back at and, all. No, I'm not saying that that's what this is, but that's the kind of, I get the feel of, she was the woman that wanted more and didn't want the family life, but in the end, you're going to have the family life, whether you like it or not, or just give into the family life because that's what you should do as a human being. You should procreate and have babies and not worry about your career as much. Yeah, I didn't get that. I got it. I got it. I get it. Even I'm jaded if, and bitter, I guess. If anybody else got that from it, feel I free to comment, email, anything like that. Because I feel like I get that from some of these movies. Yes, yeah, some of that. these movies, but this one starts with a mother, and forget that she's pregnant. She's she, her, her, her literal literal sister and her niece and nephew just died and now she has to take care of it so she's shit out of luck anyway her being pregnant I mean, has nothing I, to do with anything honestly technically yeah okay she doesn't have to take care of cassie cassie has a father still yes okay the father didn't we can die go through. cassie would <laughs> technically go live with the father before unless the father relinqu relinquished his rights she, well she and, made a comment and Beth adopted Cassie legally. I know. Then we are that going would down way I know, too much. I know, I get it. Hole. But again, that's you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, man. I, know. I, I saw some of us are deep thinkers, and we tend to do that. And it just ruins stuff. <laughs> like it's a mother. It starts out with a mother, and it has to end up with a mother role. That it's just why like a full circle. See, here's know. the thing. It doesn't start out with a mother. It starts out with Beth, an aspiring professional, and it is, it, and it, and it ends with her kind of accepting this mother role that's thrust upon her. We are, at the beginning, she doesn't want this. It's very clear she does not want this as right. her life. Yeah, I don't know. And by the end of the movie, through all this turmoil and tragedy and chaos and deadites and meanness and fucking cruelty, she somehow decides it's a good idea to have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> it just... Yeah. All right. It just I, hurts yeah. me. 
we will disagree. We're not always on. I didn't agree say on we everything. were disagreeing. No, it's either. fine to disagree, man. You don't have to see my point of view on it. We don't always have to see each other's point of view. I didn't say that we did. I okay. Said, I said we weren't necessarily disagreeing. I'm saying like. I don't say, I just think this, it's way too far to even talk into the future and what may have happened or should have happened or how she was thinking and what she could have done. Did she really want the permission? I just think we're going off on like a very long, she could have went with the dad. I don't know. This is a whole other movie at this point. It's like, um, I understand that it probably, the movie would have fit without that Baby, baby. Well, the whole thing is the, I mean, our, our main character's story arc is she goes from being what would be perceived as a selfish career woman to a loving, nurturing family mom. That's her character arc. Mm -hmm. Do you see why I have a problem with that as a aspiring professional? And you know, I'm just like, why do we always see? Why is this? I why know. is this always the recurring theme in movies, man? Yeah. And, and it's always the theme. Like that's why I pointed out the thing about the small town person who always dreams big, and then they go to the big town, and some bad happens, and they come back, and they realize they had it good here all along. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we always see that stuff, and it's just like it's Maybe like it's Hollywood's. Not good. <laughs> it's well, I, what I think it more is is Hollywood's way of saying. You little peons, stay peons. Don't try and come up oh. here with the big boys. <laughs> Don't try and join us. You guys know your role. Stay where you're supposed to be stay down there. Stay in all the becomes personal. You're like, I'm coming for you. Ex <laughs> oh, I am totally coming for you, Hollywood. You can eat a dick. No, I'm yeah. coming for you. I, I saw it as fitting, but it could have not been existed like like you're saying it didn't actually have to be there and it kind of didn't make sense but it did when i when i'm trying to make sense of it well makes... and again uh, i feel like the whole sister being pregnant thing was kind of unnecessary oh that's what i meant like that I whole like that. oh yeah, i'm I pregnant see it. It's yeah just, I see uh, it's being... just a way to add more drama in there and to add another motivating factor for her to make this yeah uh very obviously heavy-handed uh, character transformation. Yeah, yeah. So I, just, I think they may have only did it because it's a, a based on a mother getting possessed, and that that's the that's what I my understanding. And trying to kill her kids. <laughs> yeah, like that's kind of, and then she's like, "Well, I'm going to save mine." What if her mom? What if the mom was a metaphor for Democrats? <laughs> <laughs> who want abortion. So that's why mom was like, I'm going to kill my kids! And then... <laughs> okay, now. Okay. And Beth was originally a liberal because she wants to be a professional and she don't want no kids. But then along, somewhere along the way, she sees the light. She gets a fucking gun. Oh, my God. I right go. wing. <laughs> she's, she joins the NRA and gets a shotgun. Now she joins the NRA. <laughs> yeah, she's got a shotgun. I'm telling you. Right by the end of the movie, she's a super liberal at the beginning. She's a rock and roller and living that lifestyle. <laughs> by the end of the movie, she's like, I'm going to be a mom. I'm joining the NRA. <laughs> I know how to work a wood chipper. <laughs> Get some. Right. America. I can't. I can't. Why? I, why are you right? <laughs> I hate that you're right. <laughs> Take that, Hollywood. I see your ploy. And he's coming for your job. I'm coming for your jobs. <laughs> this is awful. Oh my it's god. The best episode yet. What are you it's, talking about? It's the, the longest episode yet. Oh, uh, yeah, all right. True, true. Let's wrap this one up. <laughs> I gotta go. We didn't even go to the mailbag. Oh, okay. Let's get to the mailbag. <laughs> Whip out that mailbag, Listen, Steph. I am only going to read one entry and I'll save the other one for our other one because we only have two. <laughs> well, is this one about this show? Yes. Well, then do it both. I'm just laughing. Come all right, come on. Stop No, no, no. I'm not doing really? it. No, no, no. I'm not doing it. I don't know. All right. Oh, God, my eyes are all... Do you, Do you want me to read, read it? it? Yes. I will read it. Here we go. This one comes to us from, from Jesse Zito, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Lil Dicky. <laughs> what up, freaks and fiends and boss man? So Evil Dead Rise was tons of fun, and glad it got released in theaters instead of streaming because seeing it in a packed theater was oh so fun. Mm -hmm. I really love how even though we are not in a cabin, it still feels just as claustrophobic. The camera work alone was great with the zooms and quick cuts. I'm also happy that the movie didn't hold back with the gore and violence. Some parts even made my skin crawl. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Definitely made my skin crawl. Oh, yeah. Fucking chewing glass. Uh, the peephole scene was my favorite part of the whole movie. Same. Yeah, it was one of mine, man. That, that was just a great, great, great shot. Um, 
Now, I did not like the opening in the cabin. Yeah, not the original, but it felt like a different movie to me personally, but one of the best damn title cards ever. Also, when I heard this was taking place in an apartment building, I thought we were going to get a whole building swing with Deadites, but it took place mostly on one floor. Still great, though. Uh, yeah, Jesse, we talked about the opening with the cabin, and I think... I loved it. Yeah, playing into the day before and the whole thing leading back into it, I think, and especially if our next sequel is starts with, I'd love to see it start with Jessica. Just pick up right with Jessica coming out of the fucking water and wandering into a campsite somewhere out there. Fuck it. Yeah, maybe. Or she comes across Beth. Oh. Because Beth is out killing deadites now. And she still has her, her chainsaw. Her chainsaw and, and shotgun because she joined the NRA. <laughs> With a big old uh, belly. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and the, 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 the building swarming with deadites. I would not have wanted that. I kind of felt like that would have turned it more into an action. More like a World War Z yeah. or like the Raid 2. Uh, with zombies almost type of thing. I kind of liked the... One floor, kind of. Well, I just think that the the cruelty of a mother... I know. ...on these fucking kids is just... I mean, that just makes it that much more harsh, I, I think. I, I think that was like a, a different direction to go with it. And, and uh, I think the, the, the obvious direction is what you're calling for here, Jesse, is to do the... The overrun, the, ho the the apartment building, lockdown, that kind of thing. I think that's kind of what most of us would expect. And I think they went a different way. And uh, even though it's it's Vin Diesel all about family, uh, I think it was pretty effective. I think Wait, the, the scares, you, yeah. I think it was genuinely creepy and scary because of uh, the added element of the nasty mom in there. Cause but also there's not that many people. So you really didn't know where they were sometimes. And yeah. you're like, you know, they're creeping out. But... Um, yeah, I, and usually you see, like, in, in any type of possession movie, it's, like, the kid that gets possessed, and the mom is all upset, mm -hmm. and they don't know what to do, and they call the priest, or they call... The mom getting possessed right off the bat and just going after her children. Like, yeah, well, telling yeah. them, yeah, she wanted to tear them up and all that stuff. I mean, just yeah, getting just, right to Nancy. Yeah. And when she comes out of the fucking... Uh, when she first... Climbs up out of the tub and she's like, "Mommy's with the maggots now." Oh yeah! Like, oh, that's so good. That was great. Great yeah. delivery. Uh, continuing here with Jess's email, the Easter eggs were fun, from the Campbell cameo on the recording to the vine tattoos. My personal favorite is the Henrietta pizza box. Come get some. Yeah. I didn't even realize that. We, I know. Yeah, I they, didn't and they totally showed. Yeah. They got close on that damn pizza box too. Jesse, I think you're Henrietta. the one that said it. Yep. And yeah, I what didn't were even realize. Y'all's favorite Easter eggs. Um, we went over a lot of Easter eggs. Uh, yeah, I mean the eyeball I liked. Um, I like the opening. I thought the opening fake out was a cool Easter egg. I thought it was like, ooh, that was cool. Because it winds up being an Easter egg because it's not what we think it is. But it is meant to be what we think yeah. it is. So I kind of felt like that was just right off the bat. Mm -hmm. It just got right to it. And I was like, ah. I like that better than Screams doing the same thing with the... Yeah, yeah. Like, I thought the, this was way more uh, effective. I, they both kind of did the same thing and a little fake out, but... An homage fake out, or whatever you're gonna call it, an Easter egg fake out. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite necessarily, but I think it was just from Bruce on the recording, like you said, to like even things that I discovered even after, like the pizza box, and you even tell me about the car, like I, all those. Yeah, I like the moments, car. I thought the I'm car like, was a oh, nice that's touch. That's cool. That's cool. The I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't realize it or. So I like them all. Yeah, that was a nice, nice mm -hmm. touch. All right, Evil Dead Rise, super awesome, gory fun, and must watch with a group of friends. Creep it real, y'all. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, thanks, Jesse. Writing. Do you have another one you want to read real quick? Nope. No, nope. we'll just go with that one. We'll save yes. the next one yes. for the next episode. Yes. All right. And uh, in the meantime, you guys can email us once again at talk at gmail.com, subject mailbag. And it'll be right here where you can write down. Boop, boop, boop. All right. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, and once again, make sure you subscribe, like, follow, catch us on YouTube for video, Spotify for uh, audio. They might have video on Spotify too. Uh, somebody just told oh, me we they're do. watching it. I do. Yeah. That's where I watch it. Cool, yeah. cool. All right. We got video on Spotify, folks. Yeah, not the last so. episode because that got a little funky. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, all the other trouble. ones, yeah, I, you can watch. Watch on your phone. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, make sure you join us again next week. Not sure what we're watching yet. I know. We gotta, we we'll make an announcement on the uh, socials there. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you guys want to make some suggestions, you can always throw them down in the comments. Uh, and comment what you thought about the movie. And if you liked it, what was your... What was your favorite uh, Evil Dead movie from the franchise? How would you rank them? Which one would be your top? And which one would be your bottom? Mm -hmm. Where would Evil Dead Rise fall? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. And we'll read some of your answers next week, maybe. All right, guys. That's going to do it for us mm -hmm. here at Densville Horror Talk. Stay spooky. Bye, Scream Hearts. <laughs>